Well, well, welcome back to another super special session of Bamboo Talk at Bamboo Batu. If you love bamboo, check out bamboobatu.com. That's my website, hundreds of free articles. We got uh, dozens of videos on bamboo, uh, bamboo stuff here on YouTube. So please subscribe, tell your friends all about it. Make Bamboo Batu your new favorite. And stick around because I put some extra work into my slides today. So I hope you appreciate it. We're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which comes up frequently. That's bamboo biochar. Bamboo biochar for the win. Bamboo biochar is an amazing thing. I mention it every now and then. But uh, I thought I'd go into some detail today to explain what is so great about bamboo biochar. And discuss the fact that it's a reality. It's not just some hypothetical thing that could possibly do some good for some place somewhere, maybe, but it's actually happening. We're doing it and it's working out and it's a great thing. So let's dive into it. Bamboo biochar. So biochar is a great thing for the planet. People are a little bit confused by, by that. How could biochar help with global warming? Cause you're cooking it, you're taking bamboo throwing it into a kiln, cooking it at very high temperatures. Uh, one of the big differences between charcoal and biochar is that the biochar is produced at a higher temperature than um, charcoal. So we're talking about uh, around 600, 800 degrees Celsius, pretty hot stuff. So how is that helping out with global warming? Counterintuitive, you say? Well, let's look at it more closely. And here comes my great slideshow. The biochar life cycle. So it all begins with some vigorous vegetative growth uh, in the good quality soil in some tropical area, or even in some mediocre soil, bamboo will still grow very well. It does like a lot of rainfall if it's really gonna flourish. But again, that depends on the species. There's some drought tolerant bamboo that flourishes all over Ethiopia where it's very dry very desert-like uh, between the savanna and the Sahara Desert there. So it doesn't necessarily need a lot of water. But in any case, um, this is where the cycle begins, the vegetative growth of a plant, which in this case, we're talking about bamboo, and bamboo is notoriously vigorous when it grows. So as it grows, it's absorbing CO2. This is what plants do. This is how they live. Um, just like we absorb oxygen every time we inhale. And then we let out some CO2. And then the plants absorb the CO2 and let out oxygen. You're probably familiar with that. It's called photosynthesis, or it's one, one part of photosynthesis in which plants turn sunlight into food. Delicious, delicious sugar, which makes all, all of our foods and vegetables and trees and grasses grow big and strong. So... Yeah, so plants are absorbing CO2 out of the atmosphere. Very important. The more we cut down trees, the more we end up with too much CO2 in the air. So we need more trees. We need more bamboo. We need more green stuff growing on the earth. Like the lungs of the planet, they absorb that CO2 and release oxygen. Super important. So how's that fit into biochar? Uh, the next step is instead of just letting the bamboo grow and grow and grow, we harvest it uh, when it's in its prime. And why do we do that? Well, if you just let it keep on growing and growing, eventually the bamboo pole ages. The bamboo pole gets its full size in the first year of its growth. So say you have a, a bamboo clump or a bamboo grove that's been there for several years. It's very well established. It puts up a fresh shoot in the springtime, say March, April, something like that. Puts up a shoot and it goes it's super tall. It can get maybe 50, 60, 75 feet tall. It gets all that growth right away in the one growing season. And the next year, it's not going to get any taller. It might get some branches. The wood will get a little bit harder. Um, it gets a little bit thicker. Um, comes stronger, higher quality wood, which is important. So after about two or three years, maybe year four is a great time to harvest it if you're making building materials or something. Um, and then it continues to be a very, high, very high quality bamboo comb. But if you just leave it there after another five or six years, 
depending on the species and other environmental conditions. If you just leave it there, it's eventually going to age and weather and rot and start to decay. And if you leave it there too long, yeah, it rots and cracks. And as it decays and decomposes, it's releasing CO2 and methane and other greenhouse gases back into the air. And that's no good. We want to be absorbing all that stuff. So the biochar is um, a great way to lock that CO2 into a solid state of carbon. So we went mature, we harvest, sorry, we harvest the mature bamboo, cook it down into biochar at those high temperatures and in a oxygen deprived environment so that not too much gas and smoke is escaping. We wanna keep it trapped in there. And then we have this biochar, which is like 70, 80, maybe 90% carbon, super high concentrations of carbon. And that's locked in there in a solid state. So it's not going to escape. Then as the CO2 is fixed and stabilized as solid carbon, we have created a carbon sink. The CO2 will not be going back into the atmosphere. Um, now, if you took this biochar and used it as charcoal, because again, it's pretty similar to, to charcoal in most respects, you could actually take that and put it on your grill or put it in your stove and cook it to heat your house or cook some food or something like that. Uh, if you were to do that, then yes, you would be releasing all of those, uh, all of that CO2 back into the air. But we don't want to do that. We're not going to do that. That is not what we're here to do. We are here to put that biochar back into the soil. There are a few different applications of biochar, uh, but one of my favorites, is to put it back into the soil because then you're adding carbon to the soil. CO2 is bad in the air, but turn it into a solid state of carbon, put it in the earth, and you just boosted the fertility and nutritional levels of your soil in an amazing way, uh, increasing crop productivity, soil fertility, attracting microorganisms, all kinds of beneficial um, effects of using that biochar. So it's an amazing thing. That is the amazing cycle of biochar that I wanted to share with you from growing in the, uh, so, so yeah, sorry to, to close off that loop there to, to finish off the loop, the biochar goes back in the soil and boom, you get more vegetative growth. And now we have the complete cycle. So we got the vegetative growth. We capture the CO2. We, tr we lock the CO2 into a carbon state. We put that back in the soil that makes even more vegetative growth and around and around we go. And as we go, the food is growing better. The plants are flourishing and CO2 levels in the atmosphere are gradually declining. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing? And it is an amazing thing. And that's why my good friends in Thailand are busy making bamboo biochar at this very moment. Actually, it's about 10 o'clock at night in Thailand, so not this exact moment, but pretty much right now they're making biochar um, on a regular basis. Uh, they've got lots of bamboo. They've got a furniture factory nearby that uses lots of bamboo to make some cool furniture, but there's lots and lots of pieces of bamboo that don't go into the furniture, and when they're getting the best pieces of bamboo, they cut off all kinds of odds and ends and bits and pieces, and all that stuff piles up. And if you were to just leave that stuff piled up, it would decompose. And as it decomposes, it would release lots of methane and CO2. So instead of letting that happen, we throw it on the grill and cook it down. Uh, another alternative to disposing of all that waste is to just burn it, which is what happens in a lot of places. They take their agricultural waste, they burn it, and boom, problems disappeared. But it's not really disappeared. It's just gone up in smoke into the atmosphere, contributing even further to global warming, climate change, and pollution, which is what we're here to avoid. And so, like I said, there they are making biochar. That's my friend Cone there, stirring up the kiln. That's his Kantiki kiln. Uh, there's some buckets, buckets and buckets full of the bamboo offcuts, and he cooks it into this super high-quality biochar. And there he is with my friend, uh, our friend, uh, Duncan. There's are my two buddies, uh, the biochar brotherhood. I'm really hoping they're going to kick me down one of those t-shirts because I, I look really good in orange, but seriously, I would like one of those shirts and I'm thinking I'm going to order one or get one or something pretty soon. I'm in autumn. So I actually do look good in orange.
Um, also in Puerto Rico, they're making massive quantities of biochar with this fancy contraption. This is a portable retort kiln that they can cruise around. And in Puerto Rico, they've got tons and tons of uh, bamboo. And they're actually doing themselves a favor by getting rid of it because it's a little bit too much. It's a clumping bamboo. It is um it is what is it oh yeah it's bambusa vulgaris of course it's bambusa vulgaris it's spread it's pretty prolific all throughout the tropics and in some areas it spreads out of control even though it is a clumping bamboo it does have a way of proliferating rather aggressively um one pull falls over and next thing you know it's putting down roots and putting up new shoots and it spreads along the riverbeds and waterways where there's ample water supply. Um, a branch falls off here, a branch falls off there. And next thing you know, new plants are sprouting up. So it's not a running bamboo, but it does have a way of um, replicating itself pretty quickly and efficiently. So in places where it's not native, it can be a problem. So these guys in Puerto Rico, they are making it into the biochar. Uh, with this cool um, kiln. It is an American-made kiln, I believe. And check out Bio Restorative Ideas. I believe it's B-I-R, sorry, B-R-I dot earth. I'll put a link down below in the show notes, as I always do. I'm also going to link to my buddy Duncan, who is um, the founder of the website Biochar Man, which is a pretty cool website. You'll want to check it out. So some cool biochar projects with bamboo. And one more I want to talk about is in Malawi. Um, one of my bamboo heroes of Africa, Mr. Grant. Um, Grant has been growing bamboo in Malawi for <clears throat> five or six or seven or eight years. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. He's been into bamboo for a while. The farm started gradually uh, rolled out from a you know, a few acres. He's now got 200 hectares of primarily Dendrocalamus asper flourishing in a in an otherwise pretty dry area, pretty remote area. Uh, I think it's in the southwestern part of Malawi. Uh, if you're not familiar, Malawi is a small landlocked country in between Tanzania and Zambia. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, check out a world map and look down around um, Zimbabwe and uh, poke around. There's a big lake there, Nyasa Lake. And that's where Malawi is. It used to be called Nyasa Land. That's my African geography trivia for the day. And it is a great spot for growing bamboo, as it turns out. His friends and neighbors told him he was crazy to start a bamboo farm down there. But he said, yeah, hold my drink. And now, boom, he's got 500 acres of bamboo. 500 acres is equivalent to about 200 hectares. So in case you wondered why I'm changing around numbers here, um, I am being consistent. I'm just using different uh, units. So they are making biochar. They've got lots of bamboo. They were making charcoal for a while. Charcoal is a, a very important thing that you can make with bamboo because in Malawi, for example, they, uh, they cut down a lot, a lot, a lot of trees for charcoal, for heating and cooking, which is the primary method of heating and cooking throughout Africa and a very large contributor to deforestation. And so growing bamboo, which is super renewable, is a great alternative to cutting down trees to making for making um, charcoal. So I believe they still do make their charcoal, which is very important, but they've also added biochar to the mix. It's a fairly similar process. And so it was a pretty easy transition for them to make. And they're doing a great job. And this photo is from Plan Boo, the company I work with. Uh, I'll put a link to Plan Boo down below in the show notes as well. Doing some amazing work, making biochar all over the tropics and generating carbon credits in the process. Carbon removal credits because biochar, as I explained in the cycle earlier, is a great method for removing carbon from the atmosphere. And what better plant to use for biochar than bamboo, which grows incredibly fast, renewably. And because it grows so fast, that means it's absorbing CO2 faster than anything else. 
which means you're doing a pretty good job of sequestering carbon throughout the life cycle. I could go on and on about the virtues of bamboo and biochar. Uh, if you want to hear more, scroll through my videos, scroll through the channel. There's lots to listen to, lots to hear, lots to learn. If you got any comments, pop them in the comment section down below. And that's it for today. We'll see you next week. Take it easy.